I've got three games that I want to talk about, three games that I've recently started playing that I want to make sure that I discuss a little bit. I'm very early in all of them because I've just been incredibly busy with America's Next Top Podcaster, which uh, the first episodes of that should be coming soon. I will let you know uh, when that happens. If you don't already follow me on Twitter, at Run Jump Stomp, make sure that you do so that you can find out about where you where and when you can download those those episodes uh cuz it's we've had a lot of fun making it so far um but i've i've got three new games that i've checked out recently uh one of my listeners sent me a uh $10 eShop gift card for christmas which was incredibly nice of them uh i don't know if they want me to say their name or not so i'm not going to uh but i used it to pick up a game that i had requested a review copy of and didn't hear anything back, and that was Fantasy Star uh, for Sega Ages, which I haven't really played very much of, but I never had a Sega Master System, and uh, Fantasy Star for uh, Sega Ages is actually really kind of cool. Um, it's an old-school JRPG with turn-based combat, top-down, you walk around from place to place, and I love that when you go into like dungeons and caves and stuff like that, uh, one of the things that is really cool, it like, switches over to first person view. But what Sega has done with the Sega Ages games is they are going through and they're taking these old games and they're kind of updating them to add in some modern things that improve upon the games, in my opinion. Although, keep in mind you can also uh play the original mode if you desire so i'm looking at the start menu for for uh fantasy star right now and it says we've got ages mode which is the new stuff it added in and i'll talk about that new stuff in just a second and then there's original mode is on there as well there's a monster guide so you can open that up and look at all of the monsters that you have encountered so far it's really really cool i, I love that um, there, you can obviously look at the manual. I think that it's really cool. One of the things that they did in Ages mode, which is so cool, is they've got like a mapping system. So when you are in the first person mode in a dungeon and you're kind of crawling, it's an, it's an old school dungeon crawler kind of, and you're walking around in here. Like what, what I used to do when I was a kid playing a game like that is I would, uh, nab a piece of graph paper and I would draw on a piece of graph paper the map as I went, because we obviously didn't have the internet to go to and say, well, find me a map of this. Um, so you would make your own map as you went, which is awesome. And still, you have the option to do that if you play in original mode. But this has an auto-generating uh, map. So like that, that is just so convenient for me. As somebody who's in his 40s, who doesn't have lots and lots of time to game, uh, especially now that I've got um, a mildly successful podcast as well as other stuff going on and kids, like I don't have a ton of time to play. So I like to make the time that I play as efficient as possible. Uh, that way I'm not wasting time. I really like that they added features like that in here. You can also save at any time and do save states, which is which is cool. If you're the kind of person who does a save state like right before you attack or right before you're about to be attacked and then you want to reload so that maybe you get better results, like you can do that. I wouldn't do that, but being able to save at any point without having to go to a church or whatever that is really, really important to me in modern games because at any time I could be playing a game and one of my kids needs me for something or my wife needs me to go do something or I have to go to work or whatever it is. I don't have time to just play for endless amounts of time. So being able to save it at any time is a huge boon. I also really like that in the game they have, they have a bunch of stuff that is just quality of life things that are improved upon. So there's a menu item where you can, I, let me see, I'm going to hit continue in my game. And if I hit the pause button, it brings up a, the, the pause menu brings up a spell list, an item list, 
Uh, so like I can see what every spell does, what every spell costs, that kind of thing. Uh, I think that that's really cool. An armor list, so I can I can look at this and say, oh well, hold on, I could get a leather armor that's five, but I might be able to get you know white mantle for uh, a defense of five as well, and you know it helps me make a decision uh, between two things. I think all of the things that they added in the Ages version of this game are awesome. And I am excited to spend some more time playing Fantasy Star because it's a series that I've never really had a chance to spend much time in. And uh, I'm excited to. Uh, let's shift gears real quick. And speaking of shift, we're going to talk about a game called Horizon Shift 81. The developers sent me a review code for this game. Uh, through Twitter, and this is a game that is incredibly uh, retro. It's it's basically it looks like an old arcade game. It plays like an old arcade game. Like if you think back to games like Space Invaders, uh, all those vertical. Oh my gosh, the the HD rumble is going bananas. All of those vertical uh, shooter games that the, from the eighties. It's like that, except instead of being on the bottom of the screen, you're in the middle of the screen and, and everything is kind of tilted away from you, the player, uh, and your character or your ship is on the, this horizon in the middle of the screen and stuff comes down from the top and up from the bottom and you can flip back and forth whether you're on the, on the top, shooting at the top or shooting at the bottom. And you have to keep these things from running into uh, either you or the horizon. If they hit the horizon, they will like put a break in it. And if they break part of the horizon, then as you slide back and forth, you can't go, like you'll just go right off the rails and die. You would have to then jump over that gap in the horizon until it repairs itself. Um, the soundtrack for this game is just awesome unbelievably good i adore the music in this game it's so so good it's like chip tunies and really really old school and at the end of the day like that kind of music just speaks to me i i i think it's fantastic the graphics they look like somebody went back in the 80s and stole a game brought it to the to the future and then just kind of tweaked it just a little bit to make it look just a little bit better. The, the graphics very much remind me of like Asteroids Deluxe with their vector art and their kind of their glowiness to them. Uh, games like Tempest and things like that or the, there's some weird spider game that has that had that. Uh, I, I, I think that this weird spider game that I'm thinking of is in the Atari collection. But this is really fun. It's got some pretty intense HD rumble, great music, um, cool boss fights as well. Like there's boss fights every, I think it's five levels or so. So if you haven't already checked out Horizon Shift 81, I recommend it. Uh, last video that, or last game that I want to talk about that I played this week, uh, I really haven't played much of it, but my son and I sat down and we played su new Super Mario I, I want to make sure I get the title right because it's re, re, long and stupid. Um, let's see, where is it? Um, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. My son and I sat down. We played some multiplayer with it. It's really fun. One thing that I will note, and I, I was not able to replicate it, but we were downstairs. Uh, we had my Switch hooked up to the big screen. And I was playing with the two Joy-Cons in the Joy-Con grip. My son was playing with the Pro Controller. And I kept running into, like, significant um, input lag. So, like, I would, I would be playing and I'd push a jump button. And, like, the jump wouldn't happen right away. And it wasn't, like, the whole time. It wasn't like, oh, everything seems to be delayed about a second. It was just, like, every once in a while. There was, like, some kind of input lag and I couldn't nail it down and figure out exactly what was happening. Uh, I had sent him to bed because he had to get up early in the morning on Saturday to go to a friend's birthday party. Um, and I came upstairs 
and put it in my dock up here in the nerd nest with my computer and everything. And I started playing and I didn't notice any input lag. Uh, when we were downstairs, I made sure that the TV was on game mode, which if you don't know about this, uh, a lot of modern TVs will have some kind of post processing that they do to the picture to make it look a little bit better. And if you want to turn all of that post processing off in order to have uh, less input lag, then you would put it in game mode and that takes all of the post processing out of it and uh, creates a more real time experience. So I, I knew that that was something that might introduce some input lag, but like he never really complains that that kind of thing happens to him. And he uses that TV to play on his PS4 and Nintendo Switch quite often. Um, so I made sure that the TV downstairs was, was in, uh, game mode and I was still getting that, that weird laggy kind of experience, but it didn't happen up here. So I'm not really sure if that's just me or if it's somebody else, or maybe there was something weird with my joy cons. I know that some people have complained about laggy joy cons, but that didn't happen upstairs in the nerd nest when I was doing it. So I'm really unsure about that, but Let's move past that and talk about New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Um, this came. This basically comes with two games. It comes with the one that I already had. I had New Super Mario Brothers U for the Wii U, and I beat that game. But it also comes with Luigi U, uh, which I never played and never beat, obviously. Um, and both of those games are in there. And my son and I sat down and we played up here in the nerd nest for a little bit before we went downstairs and I recorded it and that's probably the footage that you're you're probably looking at now if you're watching on YouTube and we had a lot of fun like it's it's the the game holds up I hate the art direction everything looks like a bunch of plastic um and I'm just not enjoying looking like the look of the game but you know, it, it's Mario, it looks like Mario, and I've never really been a huge fan of the art style that goes with the new Mario series. Um, that being said, I had fun playing this game. My son had fun playing this game. We're going to continue to play through it uh, together, probably, if I can pull him away from Fortnite. It's it's really good, and if if you've never, if you've ever played or never played, uh, one of these 2D Mario games. That, like, if you're new to the whole Nintendo thing, um, 2D Mario games are the best side-scrolling platformers that there are. They're just so fantastic, uh, and I've just had so much fun playing them over the years, and I think that this has got to be the best one. There's, like, 140 levels or something like that. It's insane how huge uh, this game is, so... I ended up buying this, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing more of it. It's really fun. And, uh, you know, let's go get more of those uh, squirrel suits. <laughs> 